So every time I give a talk, people say, well, what, what's the take home message? What, what am I supposed to do? Uh, what can I do today to maximize my health span and my lifespan? I won't be able, unfortunately, in 30 minutes to go through everything that you should be doing, but I want to give you at least a framework in which you can think about your own longevity and what you can do to optimize it. Um, this is a study that was published uh, in the uh, in Journal of Amer American Heart Association, looking at the impact of healthy lifestyle factors. Because you might wonder, okay, I exercise, but I like, I like my alco alcohol and I, I like to eat what I want. And, and so what is the effect of this exercise versus this one? So what is the relative impact of each of these variables? So this is what the study did. They looked at a number of healthy lifestyle factors and, and measured their effect on life expectancy in the U.S. population. And this was actually done by combining uh, something called the nurse health study and the health professional follow-up study. Uh, 123,000 people were studied in this. They were all sent questionnaires to try to assess. So there are some variables people might not have answered exactly, but I think it's a pretty strong indication. And that study is a landmark in the field of, of preventative health. So the conclusion of that paper is that what they preconize, what they recommend, is a recipe for increasing your life expectancy by 12 to 14 years. They identified a number of low-risk low risk lifestyle factors that actually really maximize lo your longevity. Some of them are completely obvious, but some others not so. Regular exercise, again, I go back, the best anti-aging medicine you will have ever, uh, for, at least for the for foreseeable future. Moderate alcohol consumption. I usually hate to bring this up to people. We have been sold the myth that alcohol actually increases your lifespan. Um, I, the only thing I have to say regarding these studies is the idea that um, many of these studies were supported by the alcohol industry. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you draw your own conclusion. Um, and I've made the point in front of audiences like this that alcohol is the new tobacco. Remember how we were sort of delusional about what tobacco meant in the 70s or 60s? And then we had a movement um, essentially eliminating tobacco from most of our lives. And, you know, cancer rates went down and, and heart attacks went down and so on. The same thing will happen with alcohol. And I think I am not recommending for people to abstain from alcohol, but I'm certainly discouraging them from using alcohol, thinking that it will improve their health. It will not. It increases cancer, it increases Alzheimer's, it increases pretty much every complication that we, that we can think of. And the people who don't drink live longer, period. So that, that I still drink, but I drink in moderation and I drink for very special occasions. Maybe one or two glasses a week. That's, and I feel a lot better. My sleep is much better. Uh, I feel stronger, healthier, clear, clear, clearer minded. So take this one home and, <laughs> and think about it. Um, no smoking, that, that's a no-brainer. Uh, High-quality diet, I'll say a few words about this, and, and a healthy weight were the, the, really the key low-risk um, uh, lifestyle factors. Regular exercise. Again, um, the data here is a little complicated to look at. I just want you for every one of them to look at what's happening here on the left. Uh, between the people who actually are exercising five, more than five and a half hours per week, uh, gain an extra eight years of life. Um, three and a half uh, hours a week, almost the same thing. So there's a lot of diminishing return. Once you reach a certain peak of exercise, you can keep exercising more, you can do it because you like it, but in terms of if you want to get the maximum bang for your buck, three and a half hours a week, that's 30 minutes per day. As retirees, uh, I, would, I would venture to say that you at least have an hour a day to exercise. So, and and I, I do exercise an hour an hour a day. And frankly, it's not only thinking about longevity; it's just a question of well-being. Uh, it, it suppresses depression. It does everything that you can probably hope uh, from from a wonder drug. And this is true for females um, and males. So remember. That's 15 minutes of walking in the morning and at night. And I would hope that uh, you would all commit to me that when I come back next year, this is something that has changed. And I, if you don't do it because you have a problem of mobility, uh, which is, can become significant, get a stationary bicycle, 
uh, join a gym class, do water aquatics. There are so many ways to exercise, but physical activity is the basis of, of healthy longevity. No, smoke, no smoking period, that's an obvious one. Uh, if you are a smoker, uh, you lose, you can lose up to uh, uh, 10 years of life, 12, 12 years in males. Uh, uh, that should be a no-brainer. High-quality diets, again, uh, people here where, um, uh, uh, I'll just, since I'm running out of time, about six, six to four years of extra life. Um, the, the, the things that you should really be focusing on are listed here. Um, five servings of vegetables per day, uh, extra serving of green leafy vegetable, skip the French fries. Uh, doesn't mean you cannot, I, I'm, I'm against any absolutist uh, uh, diet, for example. I, I don't support the vegetarianism or veganism. Um, the question is, there are a number of things that we all love. I'm Belgian, by the way, it's originally from Belgium, but so I love French fries. And it's a really, for those of you who've traveled to Belgium, we have the best mussels and French fries. And it's impossible for me to imagine life without eating French fries from, from time to time. And I suspect it's the same for all of you. Just don't eat them every day. And if you're eating them twice a week, eat them once a week and enjoy them even, even more. So four servings of fruits, uh, avoid fruit juice, and this is one of the biggest myths in the world, that fruit juice is healthy. Fruit juice is like Coca-Cola. Again, there's no difference. From a metabolic point of view, it's not healthy. And you should never have, certainly not in the morning for breakfast. Um, second thing that I hope will change. 15 minutes of walk in the morning and at night, no fruit juice. Um, uh, eat fruits, totally different. Eat an orange. Because the, the orange, the juice comes, the same, same amount of juice is actually present in the context of fiber in little cells. When you chew on an orange, you probably feel these little cells breaking in individually. You don't break all of them. The rest goes into your stomach, your intestine, and is slowly digested. That means the sugar from the fruit sort of drips into your bloodstream very slowly. And, and therein li li lies the key. Five or six servings of gr whole grain dray per day. Um, one serving of protein from nuts, legumes, or tofu. Eat fish at least once a week. And um, add healthy fats like olive oil, avocados. Skip the butter. It depends if it, what kind of butter. But in general, try to favor uh, these um, uh, healthy oils and avoid seed oils. Uh, you probably have heard about the seed oils. Uh, really to be avoided. You can read more about it online. Again, moderate alcohol consumption, I've said already, um, alcohol should be a special treat, something that you enjoy on an occasion, um, not, certainly not every day. I, I don't find it uh, healthy or helpful. And maintain a healthy weight, which is going to happen as a function of all the other changes that you're making. If you're eating regularly and if you're eating a lot of fibers and vegetables, very hard to gain weight eating vegetables. Now, here's the most important slide, because you might... Wonder, because this is nice, but I, I do one of these, and I don't do the other. I drink, I like, like to have three glasses of wine a day. Um, is that the fact that these interventions stack up? So, and this is shown here. Uh, each of these uh, low risk life factor counts for one. And what you can see here, if you add them up, eventually you get to 14 years of extra life in women. 12 years of extra life in men. And so the, the framework that I would like for you to, to think about this is, I think about, for my own health, I think about them as buckets. So I have a bucket for nutrition, I have a bucket for uh, or bank account, uh, same, same way. I think about them as individual account. It doesn't mean that I have to be perfect on everything every day, but every time I put something in an account or a bucket, it's an investment in the future. And since we know they work together, the more you put in each of these buckets, the better you will do. So as you go through your day in the next few days, think about these five different categories and think about making, ma making one change every day about the way you exercise or the way you eat. I guarantee you that at the end of the month, you will start feeling better if you're not feeling good. If you're doing all of this already, congratulations. I think I, you didn't even need to come today. Um, so, uh, all of the advices basically adds up. Adherence to a low-risk lifestyle means a longer life. Uh, this could prolong, 
prolong life expectancy at age 50 by close to 14 years and 12 years for men 